What's up, gear mortals? Trey Xavier here. I am here today at Tomon Gearhead University in Germany. And today I'm joined by the founder of Orange Amps, is that right? Cliff Cooper, uh, a legend um, in the amp design community, of course. Uh, I imagine it was you who picked the color and the name, is yes, that right? It was, yes. Um, I guess we could start there. What, like, are you just a fan of the color? or was there some significance behind it? That's my favorite color. Mm -hmm. And I also like oranges, so. Oh, the double <laughs> deuce. You could say that, double juice, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it started, um, I used to have a small amateur recording studio. Um, and we found a derelict shop in the West End, London's West End. Um, and it only, we were told it was only there for five years, the lease, they were gonna knock it down. Um, in fact, we. Have, we were there for 10 years in the end, wow. which was good news. And um, we started, oh, I painted the shop orange, luminous orange, got in trouble with the council and everybody around were muck complaining, and, oh, but we managed to keep it orange. <laughs> um, we started building a studio in the basement of the shop. Um, it took us about two months, but we didn't have a lot of money. And um, when we finished it, um, we didn't have any customers. And it was very, very difficult. Um, so. I was in a band before, a uh, semi-pro band, and um, so the, uh, my equipment, I had a load of box equipment, and I put it in a shop upstairs. We cleaned all the whitewash off the shop window, and um, it sold the, the very first day. So we started buying second-hand equipment, and it started getting very busy. Um, and eventually, we had people like um, Gary Moore and Paul Kossoff, um, Peter Green, mm -hmm. that. Um, they would come in and Mark Bowden would hang out in the shop, Beatles came in the shop. Um, and in those days, <clears throat> you know, I had very long hair. It was like those hippie days when the Rolling mm -hmm. Stones and all yeah. that was happening. And um, people came to our shop because all the other shops are all clean, you know, with suited salesmen, ties. And, you know, people wanted, they didn't want new guitars, shiny guitars, they wanted beat up guitars beat up amplifiers. Um, they and, wanted, and they wanted the guys who actually knew their shit absolutely. to sell them to them. Exactly, and, and, were, and, and spoke their language, mm -hmm. not just car salesmen. Right. And um, yeah, it got so busy, um, but none of the, we, we, Fender, Gibson, Marshall, they wouldn't supply us with equipment. So um, it made it very difficult, so we had to um, sell second-hand equipment. And eventually, you know, my background was electronics. And so we decided to make our own amp. Um, and we called it Orange. And that's how it started. Probably if, if they had a supplied us, probably we wouldn't have made they amplifiers. Wouldn't have ever existed. You know, so in it a way, seems like a pretty extreme solution, but uh, that's how great things are born. Well, it certainly happened that way. And, um, <clears throat> and we were lucky because then, with all those people coming in and it became like we had coffee. It was like everyone, like, you know, they sit around jamming all day and people would come in and out. It was very free and easy. And um, suddenly the studio started getting busy and we had Stevie Wonder recorded down there. Uh, Bee, Gees, Bee Gees wrote, uh, Robin Gibb wrote a number one single in, in the studio. Wow. And we had John Miles wrote Music Was My First Love, which went to number one all around the world. Um, <coughs> he wrote that in our studio as well. Wow. And we had Tom Jones, Paul Anker, you know, loads of top bands. Um, and it just became a real centre. And um, we used to have people queuing up outside the shop at one time, you know, just to, to buy gear. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's how it started. And of course, the first band to use Orange um, was Fleetwood Mac, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. He was a great guitarist, Peter Green. Mm -hmm. And um, they bought a complete set of Orange. And then it was just after that, they recorded our Choss went to number one. We were just lucky. Um, so there was some there was some magic going on in that studio. Something happened. <laughs> a little bit of just all the uh, concoction of everybody Maybe. being there, yeah. a good vibe, a good feeling and some community atmosphere Absolutely. and an awesome Absolutely. studio. Yeah. And then um, and of course when they had that number one Fleetwood Mac went to the States and they took their equipment with them, took the orange equipment. That was good. And then Steve Wonder bought a set of equipment and um, he recorded Superstition with Orange. Well, I did not know that. Yeah, um, and he's, he's, he had a very nice guy as well, he's 
I, he was an idol of mine in the early, still is, you know. Um, he's such a nice person as well. And he, um, you know, he, he openly t wants to tell people that he recorded superstition on, on aircraft. He's such a really nice person. Um, and that, of course, when he used it, suddenly the world opened up and, well, we had a problem making it. Yeah. We, just, we just couldn't supply anybody, you know. So, um, <laughs> it's funny how you have two different problems so close together in time. Yeah. Not enough, and, and then, or two, 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 can't sell it, can't make enough of them. Yeah. And it's always like that, right? <laughs> the hardest yeah. time is right, right in that middle where they meet. Yeah. From what I understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, so that was really good. Um, yeah, I suppose from there, um, it was about transistor amplifiers started coming in. And, you know, the Japanese companies were, you know, selling a lot of this equipment. Um, a lot. And it, we just couldn't compete with tube amplifiers. Uh, they're expensive to build. Um, and so, in fact, people, were, you could buy a, a transistor amplifier probably a quarter of the price you'd have, you could buy one of those. Yeah. So um, eventually it slowed down. They clo Unfortunately, after it was about 10 years, the, sh the shop, um, one day the street, I couldn't believe it, the street was closed off and bulldozers started coming knocking down things. And we didn't even know about it. And our business just was cut off. So um, luckily one of the boys in the shop, his father was a, a lawyer. And uh, we put an injunction on the company. And they paid, eventually they paid us some money to, to move. And, yeah. Um, it was soon after that we really stopped producing the amplifiers for a while. We just carried on making two or three amplifiers a week at a mm -hmm. custom shop. Yeah. Um, and then it was in about 1994, uh, Henry Justowitz from Gibson approached me. Um, I, mean, I, I, got, I was very friendly with Henry. They came over when, when he studied at Harvard University. Mm -hmm. And he came to England with Dave Berryman. And he used to, I believe he used to use Orange in, in, in his band. Mm -hmm. And he asked if, he, if we would sell him the name. And I said that um, I wouldn't, but I would license him the name. So we licensed it to him for five years. And after four years, it just weren't happening. So um, we got the name back. And I suppose it was about 1998, 99, we started making the amps again. Mm -hmm. But by then I heard about I don't know if you heard of Dem uh, Tim Panelli in Denmark Street in London. Nope. <coughs> That's where all the music shops are. Okay. Uh, by then I had about 12 shops in that small road. Oh, wow. Uh, one was an acoustic shop, an electric guitar shop, um, bass shop, you know. In piano separate shop. locations. All in the same all street. All in the same street. Yeah. Wow. And um, we employed a guy called Adrian Imsley uh, as, to re do repairs for amps. And um, he was a dispatch rider, or, um, you know, motorcycle messenger. Right. And we gave him a full-time job, and um, we asked him if he'd help redesign the amplifier, which he did. And again, we were lucky because uh, Noel Gallagher from Oasis, um, they'd recorded their first two albums with Orange. Uh -huh. And um, he came into the shop, and we designed the, the first amplifier we really produced was the Orange AD30. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, the AD50 and the AD100. Right. And um, he helped just design the sound he wanted. You know, he turn everything full up and uh -huh. away. But it, yeah. we got the sound that he liked. And um, of course he was using it and all the videos went out with Orange. And again, that launched us for the second time. So this, um, it, was a, it was a rebirth, a second yeah, wind. It's like second coming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second so, coming of second Orange. Of orange yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and from then, it's just, ever since then, about from, say, 2002, um, it's just been growing. Um, we do our own distribution in the States, um, and that's really gone sky high. Of course, Jimmy Page used Orange and at the, the O2 with, um, and lots of top bands started using it. Um, yeah. And of course, it's expanded. Now we bought um, two, uh, well, two factories in, the, in China, okay. um, a place called, in a place called Jai Shan, which is just by Shanghai. Um, um, <coughs> yeah, we started manufacturing equipment there. And the it was really nice quality stuff because we own the factories, whereas right. I believe people like, I believe Fender, you know, Blackstar and Marshall, they go to OEM factories. Mm -hmm. And what happens there is they'll, they'll say, we'll order five, they have a minimum quantity. 
we want 5,000 amplifiers, so <clears throat> they just make a run of them and that's it. And of course, if there was a problem, and there was always a problem with um, when you bring out a new model, you know, it's impossible to bring out a new amp and there's not something, might be small wrong with it. Um, because it was our own factory, we were able to stop production if there was, cure the problem, or right. get the factory to make something else, right. and then we'd make our own. And um, yeah, I'm very pleased with the quality of the equipment from China. It's mainly Crush, the Orange Crush range. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been really good. I, um, I've done a, done reviews of a couple of your, a uh, bunch of your amps actually at this point on our channel. Right. Um, the Crush Pro, uh, was actually one of my favorite ones. The uh, mm. yeah, uh, I was surprised because now that I've played a bunch of your tube amps, um, and then uh, and then the yeah, and then the Crush Pro, which is a uh, solid state. Yeah. Um, I was su very very surprised at how close they sounded. Yeah. And that was just out of the box, like brand new, straight from probably straight from the, right. the, your factory in China, mm. and it sounded as orange as any other orange thing that I played. Yep. So that was, uh, I mean, you can see the review. That was my genuine reaction. And then, of course, the the Crush Mini, the little tiny tiny one <laughs> with the with the uh, <coughs> the speaker out. So I ran the little teeny tiny amp into one of your two by twelves, wow. and it was it was pretty incendiary for such a tiny little guy. <laughs> so um, that I think those are pretty big accomplishments. I'm I'm not that easily impressed. <laughs> so you know I've I've played every every damn amp, and uh, especially the with the Crush Pro was like three hundred dollars or something, wow. and that's like you know. For for a kid who wants to play orange, and doesn't have very deep pockets, but wants a big old head that's gonna that's gonna power a, a full on cab so he can play rock and roll and yeah. you know blow the neighbor's hair back, that's impressive. And it's he's not gonna be like oh it's not really this it's not the jam it's not the same thing. Yeah. It'll no one in a million years will be able to tell the difference. Maybe you could tell. Possibly. Possibly. Well, I think the thing is we, we, we stuck to analog. You know, we won't we don't make digitants. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just in a way digitants are fake. I and mean, I shouldn't say that perhaps but they're not I like them but they're not they're I've never not, built an amp from parts, so I can't yeah, they're not yeah. they just don't really sound right. So we stuck to analog and what we do and we try and keep the orange sound the same in it, all their amplifiers. Yeah. You know, uh, it gets more and more difficult these days because components change. Mm -hmm. You know, you get different manufacturers of perhaps capacitors and um, resistors, and you will find by using it, it, it does change the sound. Right. So, so every time. That's we, interesting. Yeah. Every time we actually um, have different manufacturers for components, we we check the sound out or. Our, my ears are a bit shot now with all the loud music, but, <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, Adrian, the guy who designs the amps, he'll listen and adjust the amplifier to sound right. So, right. Because um, it's very important to us to keep that sound, that heritage. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll, make, we'll never change that. So I guess that brings us to the next question, which is, um, so you've got a signature sound, you don't want to change it too much, but, you know, uh, what, what then? I guess what's next for what's the future of Orange, keeping the heritage but moving forward somehow? What do you think is yeah, going to happen? Yeah, uh, that's a good question because it's a really big problem for us. You know, we have meetings and what 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 can we do? Um, we've got a, we've got our amps. That's how they are. That's how they yeah. sound. Um, we don't want to change that. Um, but we, because we're now a global company, we've got um, gotten much bigger. Obviously, with being global, we have um, you know companies in China, the States, in Atlanta, and here in Europe. Um, we we need to do something more. We need to expand because you know if you don't um, if you don't get bigger, you can't stand still. You eventually it'll just so. Yeah. We really don't know what to do. You know, we're, we'll probably, um, you know, we'll, 
we're going to bring out Bluetooth and uh, mm -hmm. a small bit of a called Juice Box. Yeah. Uh, that comes out in September. We have started making headphones, but it's a difficult gig because there was, so, I mean, just coming to Toman here, I've never seen so many headphones, makes of headphones. <laughs> oh, I've never seen so many amplifiers. The I've headphone never room seen. here is yeah. absurd, yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah, and you don't want to be uh, lost in a sea of other stuff. And so there's no well, it's a good thing you guys are bright, stinking orange, because yeah. <laughs> it'll be, uh, you know, mm. every amp is, is black, 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 and then bing! <laughs> you know, yeah. if you, in a sea of, of black amplifiers, then there's yeah. the orange that's yeah. well, impossible to miss. The other problem, of course, is that if you, you know, we are quite an innovative company, we bring out new things if you can. We invented the digital amplifier. Um, the Omic Digital, that was back in 1973, I think it was. Um, wow. And then it was two years later then people started copying that. Yeah. Um, we would have done it when we, we, we developed that, and there was about 60 transistors, it had to be. Um, I went to the bank, tried to borrow, I needed to borrow £40,000 to make a chip, mm -hmm. and I couldn't borrow the money. Um, yeah. The truth was it, it was clever, but it, it didn't sound right. It was, um, um, it was commercial failure. You know, yeah. But I'm still proud of the fact that you know we at least we did that. But nowadays, if um, if you if let's say we invented something or, or made something that was really special, um, and we we sold it and it was successful within months. One of the big companies would just copy it. Do it better and do it cheaper because they built. You know what it's. Yeah. So, <clears throat> well, where do we go? And so the only thing we can try and do is to try and um, pattern something. If we can invent something and pattern it, then you have a chance. Yeah. Otherwise, the competition is so difficult in, in the consumer market. But like, where do we go from amplifiers? You know. Um, there is a problem for us. A really big problem. I'm surprised you asked me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Well, you know, um, you know I, personally, I feel like if you can keep making great stuff, no matter what, there all there will always be a market for that. You know, mm -hmm. like um, even if it's not, even if it, the popularity of guitar-based music beco becomes less and less, you know, if you're still making great stuff, it's a a little bit future-proof to a certain extent, yes. I think. Um, you know, you you might not, in 80 years, still have be running two factories in China, um, making them all day long. But you know, Orange will live on as long as you're still making something that's that your core audience is always going to need. You know, yeah. we'll never stop doing that. You yeah. know, um, we'll always keep that core and that sound. You know, rather than change the sound because people people know you know you can't fool people with sound you know right. people say oh this sounds great but you know people who know know a good sound and um, I always think when I, I play a, I'm a bad guitarist by the way really bad guitarist <laughs> you and me both brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're not but it, 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 if I if I play a guitar suddenly I know if it sounds right you you become part of the amplifier, don't you? Yeah. And part of the guitar. And you just feel right. You just, when you get that feeling, you know it's right, you know. Yeah. And um, to me, that's, that's how I, find, I know a good amp. <laughs> and there are other good amps other than orange on the market. I promise you, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I've, I've played them all. <laughs> yeah, um, but, yeah no, that, that's the test for me. I, yeah. I just have to feel part of that sound, you know. And um, yeah, we'll, all, we'll always carry on making that. All right. So. Well, here's to many more years of, of getting that feeling. That's, All right. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thank you very it's, much. This is really absolute fun. Absolute pleasure, really. Yeah. Really thank great you. talking to you. Cliff yeah. Cooper, everybody. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah. If you haven't already, go ahead and mash that subscribe button for more reviews and original content. And we'll see you real soon.